Good morning from Longleaf, Louisiana. I'm Everett Luke, uh, Superintendent of Railroad Operations here at Longleaf and sometime amateur historian here at Longleaf. And we're standing in front of the single most unique piece of equipment that we have here in Longleaf. Buried in the woods, kind of, uh, out in front of some other equipment, is the last remaining double rehaul, outhaul, log, skitter, Clyde in the world. That's kind of a mouthful, but I don't think there are any others of any other kind either. But this is a unique piece of equipment. It was the culmination of many years of work and research by the Clyde Iron Works in Duluth, Minnesota, who made a lot of logging equipment from about 1890 onward. And this machine was designed to haul logs from the woods at distances perhaps up to 1,500 feet, but certainly out to at least 1,000. Most of the time it was used in, in the range of about 500 feet away from the track. Haul these logs from four different directions to the rails and then stack the logs alongside the rails to be picked up by the McGifford loader and loaded onto uh, the log cars. It had a pair of booms on each end. And we'll go look at the booms which are on the ground for this machine. We've, they've been gone for years. And cable drums on each end as well to handle the logs. So that there was a fireman who stoked the boiler behind me, an engineer that took care of all of this, and four operators for the corner each corner had its own set of drums and cables. The booms would be, it would be brought to the woods. It rides on a unique set of trucks. These are six wheel arch bar trucks, uh, which are not cast. They're made out of individual pieces of steel bolted together. And it's a very, very heavy machine. Very heavy and it would be brought to the woods uh, after the timber had been cut be run out on a spur set down and they would start bringing the logs in to the railhead and stacking them it was an extremely dangerous machine before i get to that though we'll talk about one more thing about it this machine is number 321 Clyde built it in 1919, and they built it for the Vernon Parish Lumber Company, which operated at the end of the Red River and Gulf in Kerthwood, Louisiana. When Vernon Parish shut down in 1929, the Crowles bought this machine as it was probably the most modern machine in Louisiana at the time, rather than see it cut up. They had other Clydes over the years. But this one was the most modern and was the last one still in use. Scattered around the grounds here at Longleaf are the remains of at least three other ones that were cut up here in the 1950s. But this one survived and was actually last used about 1954 when the mill was getting ready to shut down and uh, Mr. R.D. Kroll Sr., who was the president, actually had it rigged up and run so he could see it one more time before the mill shut down. But it had not been used at that point since the end of World War II. They were last used, this machine was last used at Hutton, Louisiana about 1943. I said it was dangerous. It was very dangerous. And it was worked like this. Some Clyde skidders depended on a man on horseback who would take a pilot cable out to the woods and then they would cable and they would attach it to the log and haul it back. They would take the heavy cable out with a man on horseback. Not very efficient. This machine was different. It could be used as a horse outhaul, what they called a horse outhaul skidder. Get that one out of your mouth interestingly enough. But it was really, a, they called it a double drum because they would run a light cable. The man on horseback would take a light cable plus a 
pulley, a large pulley out into the woods, wrap a cable around a stump to hold that pulley in place and then bring the light cable back. The light cable would then be attached to a heavy cable on the heavy drum and the heavy cable drum would have a pair of tongs on it to haul the log. So they would go out in the woods, guy would go out on horseback again, attach the heavy log tongs to a log that he could pull the cable over to reach in one direction or another. Then the machine would pull the heavy cable back with the log attached. It's only attached on one end, so it's dragging on the ground on the other end, bouncing along at up to 15 miles an hour. So you're looking at a 60 to 80 foot log bouncing along the ground at, you know, 15 miles an hour. It's not a good thing to be around. If the tongs come loose, if anything happens, people get killed. Uh, there are records of it, you know, several people being killed in Kroll operations this way. It was an accepted fact. That was a risk of being a logger in the woods. That was a risk of being part of the, the skidder crew. When it got here, the boom would pick up the one end, pick up the whole log if they could. Generally, they were cut into lengths where they could pick up the whole log, and they would swing the one end over and stack it next to the rail and drop the other end down and go back for another one. Um, by the time that they had the log stacked here, the horseman would have picked out another log. He would be waiting in the woods. When the tongs arrived, he would pull them over to the next log and they would bring it back. The machine was extremely destructive to young timber. So by the 1940s, as the emphasis shifted from just harvesting timber to growing timber as an industry and regrowing our old forests, these machines passed out of use. And they were, they basically after 1943, nobody used one. They were self-propelled. If you get underneath here, you'll find that there are chain drives on these trucks. And you could run with the steam engine. You can see the steam engine behind me right here. Here's a cylinder. Here's our uh, driving wheel, and it drove all of this. But it could also drive one on each end, could drive the truck on each end. And this machine could scuttle up and down the track to move where it needed to go without a locomotive. Most times, a locomotive would be assigned to this machine in the woods. Not always. But depending on the topography, if it was in flat country, the machine would get around pretty easily. If it was in rough country, a locomotive would be assigned to move the machine around. Along with the machine would go a flat car with a water tank on it because it carries no water on the machine itself. There's no room for any water. So it would have a water tank with it. And the water tank would be, you know, piped over through a hose a considerable distance away sometimes because if you wanted to use all four cables, you needed to have all ends free. So the water tank would be down the track and a hose would be run back to the clot. If you're using only one end, the water tank could be kept right up next to the, the machine itself. So you'll see pictures of Clyde's moving with a water tank right up next to him and working. That means only one end is working. The other end is not. Like I said, this machine is unique to Longleaf. There is not another one in the whole wide world. We're very proud of it. Our goal someday um, is to get this out of the woods, get it out on a display track, we have a set of booms and a set of heads for this machine. We could, with the proper capital investment and the right people, restore this machine to operating condition, or at least make a cosmetic restoration that would allow you to see what this machine actually looked like in service. And 
it's a goal here at the museum to have this done. It's been a goal for the 25 years the museum's been in existence, but we may be closer today than we've been before, but we need a lot of help to have this done. And we've got to move a locomotive out of the way. We've got to rebuild some track to get this thing out of the woods. But if there's one exhibit at the museum that you need to see, of all of the hundreds of things that we have here at the museum, this is the single most unique piece of equipment that we have. Come and visit us at Longleaf. See the Clyde. I'm Everett Luke. Thank you for watching.